Um, I would like to be either a professional cricketer or uh, a rock musician, I think. Oh, that's really boring. Um, if I, because I, did, I, I, I was very boring anyway, I, I went straight through, I did a law degree, I did my A-levels, I did a law degree, I did my um, qualifi professional qualifications, I took no time off, I went straight the way through, so I was one of the youngest solicitors in the country when I qualified. If I hadn't done a, a law degree, I would have done a history degree, and so I think I would have ended up as a sort of a history lecturer, or something like that in the university, something in academia. I don't know. Quite fancy career as a stand-up comedian. <laughs> I think you can't think. It's been such a long road. I think from kind of when you do your law degree and everything that you forget about what else might hmm. be. Psychology. I quite like psychology. Hypnotism. <laughs> I usually say I sue doctors and then see if they remain in the conversation um, and quite often they don't. Uh, I deal with naughty doctors and nurses and at parties I always, I don't know how I manage to do it, but I always get talking to a GP. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I tell them that I work in insurance. <laughs> I'd agree with that. It definitely depends who's at the party. Uh, working at Roy's Willie King for me is about people. It's about the people I work with because I work with some really fantastic people. I'm really lucky that I have a great team who support me. Everyone thinks that I do all the work. I don't at all. Um, I just kind of head it. In particular, my um, my PA Julia really. She's the boss. She she does everything really, and I just kind of do what I'm told. Um, one of the hardest parts is telling people that they don't have a claim when. Um, you've, you've actually carried out an investigation and you may have thought at the start and certainly um, you, your client has thought that they had a claim um, and then for sometimes for quite technical legal reasons a claim can't proceed um, and I think that's one of the hardest things is, is explaining that to people. Um, so I specialise in <coughs> inquests and fatal claims so they're obviously inherently really sad and there's lots of um, yeah, really tragic um, cases that I become involved in through that so that can be really really difficult just hearing about it and um, yeah acting for their families. Yeah I think I mean I think the best the best moments really are at, at the end of a, a very long drawn-out case we quite often we, we actually quite rarely go to trial but very often cases are resolved at settlement meetings which are quite near to trial and at the end of one of those meetings when you've got a really good um, settlement for your client, um, that, that, that is a great feeling of satisfaction. Um. For me, I think, um, yeah, there's been probably a couple of recent settlements that have really stood out um, just, and they were quite long running cases where it had taken a long time to look into every aspect of um, the client's case that needed to be provided for, um, and then achieving really good outcomes and getting them, you know, significant sums of money that mean they were able to, um, you know, in one case to have a prosthetic um, trial and hopefully then use prosthetic to help her basically be mobile following an amputation um, and yeah just really seeing clients kind of yeah benefiting from from the work and from yeah getting them back mm. on track I think yeah yeah same for me really just you know maybe the amount of cases we've been able to settle over the last year has been outstanding. Mm -hmm.